Hey, everyone. Can you all hear me? Okay. I think we are uh, just a few minutes early, but we might as well begin. Daily life in New York City takes place against an expanding backdrop of surveillance. CCTV cameras record the movements of people and cars on the street. Facial recognition algorithms attempt to use this footage to identify people, and computer vision algorithms read license plates on cars. Microphones listen for loud noises, and machine learning tries to determine whether they're gunshots. Police themselves stop and question people, recording these interactions with body-worn cameras and with their smartphones. We all carry around a device that records our movements and contains our most intimate conversations. This data increasingly finds its way into the hands of the police and is used to incriminate people. My name is Andrew Fultz Morrison, and I work as a data scientist in the Science and Surveillance Project at Brooklyn Defender Services. And I am a member of the Association of Legal Aid Attorneys, UAW Local 2325. Brooklyn Defenders is a full service public defense organization serving clients in criminal, civil, family, and immigration cases. My talk is about how I use closure to make sense of the deluge of information that shows up in our work so I can assist my colleagues in responding to it and defending our clients in criminal cases. I began by talking about sensors that collect information. We need to understand these technologies, when they show up in our cases, where data gets stored, what the observations mean, and who they target. Each kind of sensor produces artifacts. Some examples, body-worn cameras record footage and generate audit trails. Officers use smartphones to take down statements and record data that ends up in police report PDFs. Gunshot detection systems produce records of each alert. These are just three examples. We deal with many more. Long story short, it's all just data. Through systems like the Domain Awareness System and the Real-Time Crime Center that you see here, the police are looking at our clients. Closure helps us look back. I want to show you two examples of how. The first is this interactive surveillance map. It shows three data sets. The orange markers show, show the location of every shot spotter gunshot detection sensor in the city. The large red circles show the locations of CCTV cameras collected by volunteers with Amnesty International. And the small black markers display the NYPD's own data on the locations of police stops. It also has an address search capability, allowing us to find nearby records of surveillance when looking up an address. In addition to that, we can add case-specific information to this map for temporary use. Just a few weeks ago, I helped one of our investigators display cell tower data, which showed that her client was nowhere near the location relevant to the case at the time. Rather than entrust this data to Google Maps, we know that any data we display on this map remains completely private because we built it ourselves. I used Clojure alongside other tools to quickly build this map. The tablecloth library helps me standardize and process the input data. DuckDB, a local analytical SQL database, stores and queries it. Data version control allows me to perform updates to that data while tracking every revision, just like Git. I first built maps with Vega Lite in Clerk notebooks, but eventually I needed something I could customize further to display more context. Squint CLJS let me do that using two JavaScript libraries. Leaflet.js displays data and interactive elements on top of a serverless base map provided by Protomaps. Zooming out from individual cases, putting all these data sources together allows me to build analyses and reports in Clerk that show the distribution of surveillance technology across New York City. DuckDB's spatial queries can quickly join from sensor locations to precinct and census boundaries. This lets us understand the demographics of neighborhoods where the burden of surveillance is most prevalent. We see across a wide variety of technologies the disproportionate placement and impact of surveillance technology on black and brown neighborhoods in New York City. I next want to show you a different kind of map that we made using Clojure's data ecosystem. 
This map depicts the, net, the NYPD's network of surveillance technologies. The direction of the arrows shows the flow of data. We arrange the map in three layers defined by the role played by each of these technologies. Data collected by sensors like CCTV cameras, drones, body cameras, and so on is routed to storage technologies like case management systems and the domain awareness system. Once stored, it can then be queried and analyzed by data processing and machine learning technologies like predictive policing, facial recognition, and other inferential systems. We base this map on the NYPD's public disclosures about each of these technologies, which are mandated by the Public Oversight of Surveillance Technology Act. The initial version of this map was this messy GraphViz diagram pr produced from the results of a query against the Asami Graph database. All credit goes to Matt Daniels, who helped us untangle this into the clear, coherent, uh, and organized version you see now. This isn't a static map. It also serves as the index page for an internal site, also generated using Clojure. Users can click on the name of each technology to find a fact sheet with more information about it. This way of displaying technologies arose from my need to see all this information in one place. And now it helps our attorneys see their cases differently. I want to turn to the question, why closure for criminal defense? For me, it comes down to two primary reasons. The first is that velocity matters. The interactive capabilities of Clojure's REPL and clerk notebooks allow me to visualize data rapidly enough to get feedbacks from, from, colleague in, from colleagues in real time about changes to a plot or visual while sharing my screen on a call. I've worked professionally as a data scientist and data engineer in Python, Scala, and R in addition to Clojure. Python and R both have good interactive capabilities, but I use Clojure because it allows me to get more done as a solo data scientist with less friction than any other language that I use. A read eval display loop is far faster than a compile, test, deploy, run cycle when moving at the speed of a case. Velocity matters. Second, Clojure's emphasis on plain data. Messy real world data sources may have partial or missing information. Simple maps shine in situations like this. Working with plain data structures like vectors of maps means that different tools compose easily allowing me to quickly try different ways of making things visible. I want to conclude by talking about what closure programmers can learn from public defense work. I think the biggest takeaway for me is that technology problems are increasingly just problems. Not every organization has the resources and staff of a traditional technology company, but more and more, everyone deals with the same problems that they do. Nonprofits of all kinds must now interface with automated decision-making systems and technology platforms. You have leverage that can be used to help. Your skills as a programmer, when you apply them to a new context or problem, can make you a force multiplier on the work of your colleagues in unexpected ways. The visuals I build help others at Brooklyn Defenders see like a technologist by putting the flow of data front and center. What seems trivial to you can often be a complete game changer for them. The knowledge you have from working in the tech sector may be useful in unexpected ways. I mentioned smartphone data at the beginning, and when I was interviewing at, at, Brooklyn, De at Brooklyn Defenders, they specifically mentioned that they were looking for someone who you know, had experience with surveillance algorithms. And well, so working in mobile advertising gave me a bit of hands-on experience with that. <laughs> You may be, as I was, the first one hired in your role. You could have the, the opportunity to chart your own course and influence the organization in ways that are defined by your unique skills. For the opportunity to do just that, I'd like to extend a, a very special thanks to Elizabeth Daniel Vasquez, the founder of the Science and Surveillance Project. Without her, none of this would be possible. She hired me as Brooklyn Defender's first data scientist developed a distinctive vision for the work that we do, and encouraged me to submit this presentation. I'd also like to thank the organizers of Closure Conj for putting together a great conference and giving me the opportunity to share my story. And lastly, thank you to the audience for attending my talk. I truly appreciate it.